Howdy class, this is writing to files in C++. Writing to files, what does that mean? Well, right now, so far, all of our output has gone to the console, correct? Uh, we've been coding over here in our IDE and then pressing our giant run button here. And then the console is where all of our output has been. Now we can change that to a file rather than having all of this output here, we can change it and have all of the output then written to a file. Or we could opt to do both. We could have output going to both the console and to an external file. So here's how we'll get started on that. There's a couple of uh, housekeeping items to uh, think about first. Our first housekeeping item is gonna be to include the F stream library. F for file and file stream, just like we've been including IO, input output stream all along, and that is taking care of output to the console. Our next statement actually creates the output object. And what that means is this statement here is gonna create an object that we can name. Here, I'm gonna just call it FOUT, file output or FOUT. That's developer programmable though. It can be any name you want, but I prefer to use FOUT because then when it comes time for us to actually use it in code, it's gonna look and feel so much like COUT and it'll be very easy to identify that, hey, this one is going to the file. This one is going to the console. So that's why I recommend uh, calling your output file object that fout. Well, once we have these two items taken care of, this these two housekeeping items, well then, um, it's gonna be as simple as using fout in place of count to route to a, um, to a file. So first this, I'll call this line number one here, uh, this off stream, O-F-S-T-R-E-A-M, uh, that is gonna do a couple of things for us. One, it'll create the output object, fout. The second thing is, is that it will then bind that to the file name that we provide. So it'll directly connect then fout with whatever file name we connect here. And of course, this file name needs to be in the same directory, the same folder system as our original code. And in Replit, that's easy because it's just going to be right there as part of our project. Now, another housekeeping thing is here, we've actually opened a file and we'll need to close it when we're done. So way down at the end of our code, when we're done writing to this file, uh, let's go ahead and close it. With just fout.close, that'll close it. And it's good housekeeping to do so. Uh, some IDEs actually won't complete writing to the file until you close the file, then it finishes the write operation. Um, Replit does not do that. Replit will just start to write it. Now, then we're, whenever we want to output to the console, we will just output like normal. If we want to output to the file, we will just output like normal and just use a different stream object here, fout versus count. So let's take a look at some code and see this in action. Here's some code now. Note here in line two, we've got the include F stream library. And then here in line six is where we declare our output object, fout, and then we bind it to the file name output.txt. Now notice I haven't run this code yet and there is no output.txt over here in the file system. Uh, but do note that uh, when you use this code, if you create a file, um, it will, it, if you, I should say, if the file does not exist and you run it, it will create the file on your behalf as a courtesy. So it won't give you a file error. Um, if you try and open a file later, say we're gonna try opening one to read data, uh, and if that file doesn't exist, well, that will give you an error. But for output, nope, 
if it does exist, it's going to overwrite it. If it doesn't exist, it's going to create it as a courtesy. Now you can check the book. There are some other modes that you can open up an output stream object like this. Uh, you can also open it in append mode uh, to where it won't completely overwrite the output file, but just start adding to the bottom of it. So you can read about that. But the most common application is just that a file is going to be uh, completely rewritten. So let's take a look now. Um, I think I just want to, oops, no, let's not do that. Okay, here I'm going to count hello and I'm going to fout hello. And you see we get a hello from the console here. But then now look over here in our file navigator. You'll see suddenly we have an output.txt file that has been created for us. So I'm curious now, let's click on that. And we see that we also have the word hello. So the output has successfully gone two places, console and to the external file. And to show that it does overwrite the file, I'm going to uh, run this again. And now it's hello there. And now when I look at output.txt, you can see that it has been overwritten and changed completely uh, per the expected behavior for this. Uh, so this is, this is outputting to a file. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you just have to remember that you are formatting the file exactly like you'd format the console. So you will have to do things like use your end lines, use your set widths, use your columns, e everything is just like uh, uh, in the console. Matter of fact, perfectly like. All right. All right, so let's code something. Let's say we wanna write a um, hundred random even numbers to a file, a hundred random even numbers to a file. Let's code that. Are you ready? All right, let's get to some coding. We'll need the SRAN statement. We'll clearly need some kind of a loop. I'll just make up a number here. And let's start to get some code in there to fill out the rest of that for loop. Here's some code to get us started. We're just gonna output 10 numbers for now while we're testing, and then we can jump that up to 100 when we're actually ready. And I've got a min and a max rand of 10 or 50 and 500. So this code here is just gonna output 10 random numbers, as we'll see here. There's 10 randoms. If we look at output.txt, we'll get the exact same numbers. So uh, this is fine. Um, let's make it so that we are in uh, columns of certain widths. So let's do a constant for columns. And let's say we want to do three columns. Let's go ahead and close that uh, code that real quick and see how to get this output now in three columns. Here's our code to output in three columns now. You'll note that I've got a constant saying how many columns we want. And here is a set width constant for uh, how wide of a field we'll use. So this constant set for five characters in that field. And I changed the for loop header. Um, it's easier to do it this way. Start at one and go all the way up, including that number, just so that the math works out for counting this extra end line. And then here's that same code that we've been looking at uh, for a couple of modules now. And this is the code that will successfully put that end line character um, after every three. Now, if we wanted to change it to four columns, that's easy. All we do is change one constant in the number of columns and there's four. Let's say we want seven columns and now I want 65 numbers. Then it's very easy to play with these dials and gauges now that we have these just set as constants. So here's seven columns and it's looking pretty good.
Now, our only remaining thing here, you know, we are doing random numbers to the file here, but the idea was we only want even numbers, only even numbers. So let's think about how we could do that. You know, one way would be to just put a guard up if, if this temp variable is even, then let's do all of this code that we had already typed in. <clears throat> so we will just put that in, uh, in braces. We indent the code that we know we need to repeat. And uh, hang on a second. So here we could put a guard in here saying, okay, only if it's an even number, write it to the file and write it to the console. So let's see what happens now with that little guard up there. Well, our formatting is sure messed up. And that's because I isn't um, being relied on every single time. And I see that there are in fact, even numbers there. But I think the idea was we wanted to have a hundred even numbers and I'm not seeing a hundred there. Uh, matter of fact, if we change this constant <clears throat> uh, so that the for loop goes a hundred times, we can see that, well, this still isn't a hundred times. And that's because we've thrown out an awful lot of odd numbers. So let's think about this. How would we guarantee that this number is even and still within that range? And one way to do it, well, first, let me tell you how not to do it. And that is you can't just add one if it's odd, because what if the high bound is 101? That's the highest it can go. And what if the number is 101 and our algorithm says to just add one to it? Well, that suddenly moves it to the bad territory. So the adding one or having thing uh, doesn't, doesn't always work. We just want to code it so it always works. Well, let's do this. Why don't we do like an input validation loop? We can use a while loop here. We can generate that temporary number and then put it through a while loop and saying, all right, is this even? If it's not, go through the loop again, generate another one and keep going until it's odd. So let's try something like that rather than this if guard. So I'm gonna take out that code and right here, let's put in that while loop guard and you'll see uh, what I'm talking about. It'll actually function just like an input validation loop. So here is that very while loop in lines 16 and 17. And it's saying, as long as the random number is odd, let's try again and generate another one. If that one happens to be even, great. Then we bust out of the loop. If it happens to be odd again, no big deal. We're just going to stay in that loop then and generate another one. And odds tell us that pretty quickly we'll encounter uh, one that complies with our requirements. And then note here, you know, the same code applies uh, as before. Um, so this was uh, a kind of a quick way to generate a fixed number of random numbers that have to have a certain attribute. All right, now let's just um, check our output again. We've got really good output here on the console. And then let's change how output.txt is. And uh, that's a little off. There are no return lines in there. So let's go back to our code and see what happened. Well, here in 19 and 20, that all seems fine because we've got a count and a fout matching each other there. So I think we're good. Um, but I see the problem right here. It's this. This count does not have a fout to go with it. And since that's now the second statement inside this conditional statement, uh, then I've got to add some braces there. Let's run this again, and hopefully we'll get a bit better output. Uh, the console still sure looks good. Hey, and look at that now. Uh, the output.txt file is behaving and it's actually matching um, uh, the console.
now I've posted this REPL in this lesson. So make sure that you hit that and sort of follow along as I go. And that will really, uh, really help, I think, cement your understanding uh, a lot quicker. Okay, that about does it for writing to a file. Remember the key takeaways include fstream, create your output file object with offstream, OF stream, and then your uh, output object name. And I recommend fout always. Uh, don't forget fout.close. And don't forget if you're going to output to both the console and the file, that every print statement needs to be repeated verbatim one account and the other a fout. So remember those, uh, those little tricks. Uh, and then again, check the book for learning about appending. All right, good luck, everybody.